Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today, I've actually managed to get my hands on the Xeon W9-3475 and W9-3495 processors. Now that's 36 cores and 72 threads on one, 56 cores and 112 threads on another. Now these things are absolutely enormous. Uh, but I have started doing pre-roll video things. So, today's video is brought to you by, do you have the annoying activate Windows icon on your desktop or you're planning on building a new rig and need a fresh key? Then head over to SCD key where you can buy Windows 10 and Windows 11 codes. Don't forget you can purchase a Windows 10 code to activate Windows 11. This is something where you can save a few pounds. But if you go and hit uh, Windows 10, hit buy it now, and then when it takes you to the basket, you can use OC3D as your promotional code, and that will give you 25% off any of the Windows codes that I'll show you today. Once you've hit submit order, it will take you through to the payment options, and you can pay by credit, debit card, PayPal, Mint, or NeoSurf. And once you hit pay now, you'll uh, receive your code into your email inbox. If you head over to the uh, SCD key website then you will be able to buy uh, discounted versions of the latest games and also software like office as well if you are interested okay so the pre-rolls it is something that looks like the whole industry has started doing uh, and i am very late to the party but we will stay on track and that is these monstrous processors now the third i'm going to go about it slightly differently though so we're going to have a good play um, now these are going to be very multi-threaded professional processors but I'm going to treat them like I would everything else so we are going to mix some games in also I am going to do a little bit of overclocking I am going to talk you through some parts of the BIOS I am going to try and share this with you so with all due respect these are crazy processors that I've only been able to borrow the 56 core one is the Intel were already asking for it back because it's actually it's not going on to other media oh no it's actually going back into Intel to be used uh, I'm not sure whether it's going into like a data farm or whether it's going in for like internal 3d modeling or something like that but I do know it's going back to be put to work and that's because that processor, that uh, 56 core one, is £6,000. The 36 core one is £4,000. Now, I do get to keep my hands on that one for a little bit longer, but the value of these things is rather insane. Um, so that is why I feel very grateful to have been given the opportunity to have a play with this. And it's also why I want to kind of show you not just performance numbers, but some of the things about using it. Like, how does uh, hardware monitor react? What's the big list of cores like? What is the temperatures like? Uh, how do the, um, the clock speeds dance around when we put it under load? <clears throat> Lots of those things that you'll get used to if you had it on your desk. But if you are like some of us or you guys, that sat at home and you can only watch someone like me and I do feel sorry for you, I'm gonna try and share as much as that with you as possible. So these uh, cores, uh, or these, the Sapphire Rapids, these crazy CPUs, if I was to put a 13900K by the side of it, I think you'll get the gist of the size difference. <clears throat> it is rather insane, but it does make me think that that large, IHS on the top looks quite thin that, and quite large, so it might actually help us with cooling. So I live in hope with the Noctua air cooler that I have here today. Now when I do my uh, stock results, it's with the standard Noctua fans, which I forgot to pick up. But when I do the overclock stuff, I actually strap some 3000 RPM of their server fans to it, just so that we had covered as many bases as possible. Now, uh, I will be doing a second stage to th this video because uh, literally yesterday I had my water block arrive from Dave at EK and I've got this crazy looking monster water block which is with the brushed um, stainless on the top is actually a very pretty looking bit of kit 
we are going to be covering some more stuff. I have done some overclocking with this. The results are monstrous and we will cover that. But the other thing that I do need to cover because everything within this costs a fortune is I did get some memory off of Kingston and I thank Kingston very much. When we did the uh, stock stuff, I ran all eight sticks of this. Now this is our dim and uh, it's DDR5 ECC registered dim. R dim, registered dim, R dim, and I uh, was lucky enough to get 128 gigabyte of 6,000 megahertz. Now at stock, I run eight sticks. Sorry, at stock, I run uh, all eight sticks. When we went up to the overclocking, I pulled it back to four sticks uh, just to keep an eye on some of the volts and stuff. I did get it running with just XMP with all of them in, but I'm just being open that when I run the test, I only had four sticks in. I didn't actually have any stability problems or anything like that, but because of limited time, I was just trying to cover as many bases as possible. But you will see all eight fitted when you run the water cooling and we go absolutely nuts. It's just because, like I said, I was trying to uh, simplify things where I've only had a short period of time. Um, uh, everything was tested with a 4090. All of our CPUs now are tested with a 4090. So it does mean we can dump everything into the same graphs. <sighs> so, deep breaths. Uh, I was sent by Intel an ASRock W970 motherboard to use. And I will say, in their defense, I've had no problems with it at all. Um, it has actually made my life quite easy. The uh, VRM heatsink on the top and the back has got some fans on it. I left those alone. They could do what they wanted until we went to overclock and then I just turned them on turbo max mode to try and cover as many bases as possible. But when you do build this board, flipping heck, like you have an eight pin on the top left hand side of the board, we'd be used to that. You have another eight pin on the other side of the board. I don't see that as a problem either couple of eight pins, there's plenty of boards out there that we would connect a couple of eight pins in, but there are two more eight pins down here where you would expect the SATAs to be, and the board will not start without them. So you need a total of eight uh, pins on the board. Now these are technically PCI Express uh, connectors, so you're going to need to consider that with your PSU choices if you are going to end up running one of these talking about PSUs, I fired the best power supply I have in the house at the moment at this, and that is my AX1500i from Corsair, because I knew I would have not only enough connections to be able to share with, but I know the build quality with the Corsair. If things started to creep up above 1500 watts, I actually felt safe in the use or in the knowledge that the Corsair would be able to handle it. I didn't actually get within the limits of the CPU though. I think if I do want to max the power supply out, um, I'm going to be needing water cooling so that I can keep everything even more cool, but also to really start pummeling the clocks on the 4090 as well. So that's why we're going to do a secondary kind of stage with it. Now, I have said that I have done overclocking. Now, I want to cover the overclocking now because in my graphs, you will see both sets of results. So the stock stuff was quite literally went into the BIOS, enabled XMP. It ran out of the box. The board didn't give me any problems. The memory didn't give me any problems. It all worked. Deep breath. So that was all nice and simple. And then we run all of our test suites as we would have expected. But then I started to play around with in the BIOS. Now there is basically a enhanced core mode within the BIOS that you can, and there's different levels, it basically goes from one to seven. And the more you push it up, the more it gives a little bit more power and it gives a few more volts. And effectively what it does is it allows the cores to turbo that little bit more. But what I did notice when I was doing this is the scores were going up the scores were going up with the multi-threaded stuff but weirdly the multi-core seemed to stay the same so for say within cinebench and the 36 core it was just sitting at three gigahertz but you did get kind of like weird spikes 
Um, Cinebench did benefit from this enhanced turbo mode, but in reality, it was the, the manual multi-core that really uh, made the biggest difference. Now, if you were going to be doing lots of different tasks, then the multi-core enhancement might serve you better. But if you are going literally 3D model, um, re blender renders, just crazy core heavy all the time, then a manual overclock is probably going to be where you're going to want to head with. Now, I did actually get some quite crazy numbers. Bearing in mind, we see a three gigahertz, all core. It was quite easy for me to push past four cores. Now with the 56 core, I ended up getting it running at 4.4 gigahertz, all core with zero problems at below 1.1 volts, cooled with an air cooler. Admittedly, once we started pushing things, it was getting up towards 90 degrees, but oh, and just so that you can see the temps, even at stock, we were looking at around the 60 degree mark with the 56, and below 60 with the 36. It was actually quite an eye-opener how well this Noctua coped. Now at stock, that was with the standard Noctua fans as well. So it wasn't loud, you could have lived with it, you could have even set up a fan curve if you wanted to, to make it quiet afterwards. The Noctua cooler was so quiet that the VRMs were the ones that you ended up hearing. It's actually quite an eye opener. Um, so I'm completely losing my train of thought. So 4.4, I actually did manage to get 4.7 running on the air cooler with the 36 core. I am going to say to you though, that was at 1.05 volts. Um, again, thermals with the problem. There is definitely, without a doubt, more left in the tank. Uh, the, one of the reasons why I was kind of disappointed that the water block didn't turn up in time was because I'm at such low volts, I don't know where the big steps are gonna be because there will be a point where you go, oh, it's 1.05 volts and it will do 4.7, but 4.9, might need 1.2 volts and then things might start getting crazy with temps even underwater. The, the voltages kind of, the, once you go up a, a multiplier, sometimes the voltage required is an even bigger step and then a bigger step again. We're quite lucky at the moment though. I'd love to be able to see five gigahertz, but who knows? So now you know, 4.4 with the 56, 4.7 with the 36, all done on air, but yes, we had to strap some turbo fans to it to try and keep it uh, under control. Now, we're gonna to talk to you about some Cinebench and Blender specifically, and then we'll talk to you about the other stuff afterwards as well, but I'm not sure whether you picked up on this, but I'm actually really excited that I've had a play with this because it's insane. When we open up Cinebench for the first time, Literally, when that, those boxes start to open, it was a little bit of an eye-opener for me, because you know it's got a lot of cores, but that is a lot of cores. And this is only the 36 core model as well. You can see it whizzes its way around there mentally fast, and the score was just as mentally fast as well, but we will cover that. I've edited down the single core stuff though, because this was significantly slower. It's obviously not a 13900K or something like that, and you can see it's tickling its way around quickly. And you can see at the end, and there you go. But right now, it's a really good time for us to bring up the Cinebench scores themselves, just so that you can see the lunacy of these processors. And they are absolutely nuts. The 56 core one was, oh my days, literally in a league of its own and you get a hint there of the overclocking and stuff as well which I do want to cover with you because it did take me a little while to get my uh, self through it but I want to cover that in um, more depth but more to talk about uh, Cinebench is now the cores you can see the clock speeds uh, and we're going to look at the temperatures as well. And I thought it'd be nice because at the end of the day, it's nice for you guys to see stuff like this running. And, you know, you may never see one other than in videos like these. So temperatures were at the top there. 
Then you've got these clock speeds. You can already see that one of them is kind of flicking its way around to 4.3 gigahertz. Obviously, we are only on the 36. When we move on to Blender, this is actually our own custom Blender that we use. Now, this is our 1080p one, and there's so many cores, even on the 36, it populates the whole image straight away. Now, normally we would still see a group of boxes and it would build the boxes up over a few minutes, but this actually, as you'll see in the graphs in a minute, finishes it in no time whatsoever. It's a little bit different with our 4K model. Again, we'd still normally see a lot of boxes build up on this, but this is almost half of the image populated straight away. Now, this does have a dramatic effect on the performance. As you can see, nothing can even come close, but with something like Blender and something like Be Cinebench, it is to be expected because they are multi-core hogs. But this is what we would expect if you're going to be investing the money that you would need to in something like these Xeons, you are going to be using every single one of the cores and threads available. There's obviously just the little twist that someone like me might think that they could do with a little bit more performance, maybe? So now you've seen the first couple of bits, I wanted to talk you through those and show you those little idiosyncrasies because it's just a completely different world with those two. Cinebench first with those crazy blocks, nuts, but the fully populated and almost like half populated blenders were a massive eye opener because you just normally have a few boxes in the middle and then they build them out. So that was, for me, it was just like, wow. And it, they did it just so fast as well. You can see it's just completely blown the graphs apart. Now they've blown the graphs apart, but as you can see, they've blown the power bill as well but you're never going to expect to have this many cores running at quite high clocks and then them not draw a lot of power. I do think that once I manage to push the taps a little bit more, I'll be able to get them to pull even more as well. But the thing to stress is yes, they are pulling a lot of power, but they were still managing to be able to be kept relatively cool as well. It is just an air cooler. Now, yes, we did see 90 degrees when I was pushing the overclocks with these, but they were far be If you think that three gigahertz for the 36 is where it wants to sit as a multi-core, and I had it running almost 50% faster, I don't think the temperature difference is that bad. I'd love to have got an AIO or something on it to see how it could have coped, but we are just going to have to yomp straight into custom water cooling and see how we can fare with that. But the other scores, yes, we did do some crazy other testing. Crazy in that we did test games on it, but it's because we wanted a mixed bag. We don't just want this to be about people. Yes, people that have got a lot of money are going to buy them, but I want to be able to show you guys that are just at home, that are just interested in this, that are just passionate hardware enthusiasts, the sort of numbers that can be expected. And yeah, you're not going to buy one to play Rift Breaker on it, but it's nice to know. I think it used to be anyway. So there are many, many more results over on the OC3D website if you would like to go and take a look. Like you can go and pick about part of the graphs. You can compare this to your own uh, setup if you want to. Just remember that we are testing with the 4090 as well. So we, as far as graphics cards are concerned at the moment, we're pushing that processor as hard as we can. But obviously with games and stuff like that, it's not going to do as well because of the clock speed because clock speed is still king. When you're talking about games, it doesn't, you could have a lots and lots more threads, but at the end of the day, if you had a six gigahertz four or six core processor, it's probably gonna perform better than this just because of that clock speed difference. So that is something for you to think about, digest and uh, decide your own opinion on. And I'd actually like to know your own opinion in the comments underneath as well, because I would encourage you to tell me whether I've done something wrong, done something right, click like, click subscribe, do all the things you can or would like to. Um, now it is a lot of me 
talking to you because at the end of the day, we've got some very expensive uh, processors which aren't really particularly amazing to look at, but it is about what we can extrapolate from a crazy system. And I do need to say that if it wasn't for Intel giving me the processor and the processors and the board, and then Kingston stepping up and hooking me up with the memory, I couldn't have done this anyway. Um, so I am incredibly lucky, properly excited, and really, really, really want to get this really zig zig uh, get this water block bolted to the top of it so that we can go crazy with the next phase. I have a sneaking suspicion you may see something kind of jimmy janked onto the top of this with just hoses hanging out of it. And then we may have to do something slightly prettier as well because it is making me feel quite lucky. Have you got the point yet that I feel lucky and I'm actually really excited that I've had a chance to play with this? Anyway, don't forget, uh, with the pre-roll, if you didn't watch it, you can get 25% off of Windows keys if you put OC3D in an SCD key. Um, and that does mean you can get a Windows 10 key for £12. And quite amazingly, and I have done it and I have tried it, you can use that Windows 10 key to activate Windows 11. So you can activate Windows 11 for 12 quid with my code. It literally is just OC3D. So if you're interested, go back, find the pre-roll, have a look at that, because I think that's quite cool. And I've actually bought a couple of code synths for some of the test rigs. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. One £6,000 processor, one £4,000 processor, that's £10,000 worth of processors on test today. That's without the fact that I've got £1,000 worth of memory and a £1,000 motherboard. I'm not trying to brag. I'm just incredibly grateful to be able to do this kind of stuff and share it with you guys at home. Don't forget, you can go and see more stuff on the Overclock 3D website, both more details on this, but also lots of other reviews. There, We are so close to a brand new website as well. I'm so stoked to be able to share that with you soon. But for now, at least, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for putting up with me waffling, but this has been Tiny with another video for you, out. Ding! Love you, sis.